Now that we've finished our composite walls, we've got our new structural exterior envelope. Now we need to start doing the interior work. Now I haven't drawn all this. What you're seeing is the, um, the trace from the roof story above. So we're going to have to change that trace reference again so it's a lot easier to understand. We're going to change that reference back to the uniform color. We're going to make that, that um, creamy yellow color so that we can see it but it's not so dominant on our page. The first thing that we're going to start doing is the interior walls. Now they should be quite simple. Uh, you can see that currently this wall in the middle is very thick. Why is that so? Because the span from here to here is 9 meters which is fairly large and it would mean that the the structural floor above would need to be quite substantial to support it. So the intention of this design is that rather than being a lightweight internal wall, that's also a structurally load-bearing internal wall. Now, of course, depending on the project, depending on uh, what's underneath this, we'd have to be thoughtful about how that will work. But what we'll do in this case is to reuse another concrete block wall. Um, and we see that it's smaller than what we've currently got. So whether that's going to be accurate or not, let's not worry too much about it at the moment. Now, how far down does this go? Does this go the whole way? Realistically, it would only need to go far enough down to reduce this span. And then once we get down here, the span from side to side is only 7.5 meters. So we don't necessarily need it, but we'll just extend it all the way down to keep it simple for now. So we're sort of, again, that's, you can never get away from the fact that we're making design decisions, construction decisions, and they're informing our Archicad process. So you can't ever just CAD without thinking, unfortunately. Um, or if you do, you're maybe not going to get a good result. Let's have a look at what else we have. We've got here, uh, do we want to make it all concrete block internal? We could, or we can make the rest of it just... Um, a lighter frame. So we're going to use this 90 mil stud partition plasterboard both sides. Now it's again not necessarily accurate with what we're trying to do but it'll be fine for now. We're going to use this, we zoom in, we can see it a bit more detail and we're going to extend these just to recreate our uh, existing walls or our tracing walls and of course if it's not correct we can then change it later. I'm just dragging a copy rather than redrawing it every time. I will just redraw this one because it'll be faster. Let's finish this off. Now, re in reality, I should be extending that all the way down there. I'm just having to focus a little bit more to make sure that they actually follow all the way through to join. Uh, what does that mean? I'll turn off the trace for a second so you can see what I mean. It's very important that the walls match up with their reference lines so that the walls are intersecting uh, and they should be intersecting correctly and currently they're intersecting pretty well meaning that the concrete block is more important than the timber frame or the plasterboard so the, the timber frame and the, and the plasterboard stops and the uh, concrete block runs through consistently. Now your walls won't always do that depending on the settings that you're using so you have to make sure that you've got the settings correct in order to achieve this. Let's just finish this off. So like that's a fantastic example after we'd finish that we see that this isn't intersecting correctly. Our reference lines on this side, our reference lines on this side so we need to reduce this one so that they line up more appropriately. That's better. And then, of course, we can finish the last one. Let's just check this one. This one doesn't look quite right either. Let's extend this all the way through. So that will now intersect properly. Um, and this one is, so that's good. So now we've got all of our walls drawn. Now I'm drawing these quite quickly. Uh, you'll note that I also haven't been um, showing the robes where the wall goes in front of it. I will do that when I'm doing... Um, presentation drawings just for graphic representation and speed. I generally don't show the wall at the front of uh, a wardrobe, but of course in terms of real construction it will absolutely need to be there. So I'll add those in now just so I'm not being confusing. Now it's a bit awkward that 
that doesn't quite line up. Of course, I could if I wanted to adjust that slightly. And of course, if I was doing that, I wouldn't do it as two separate walls, but I'd make it one wall. Uh, when you're hovering over an element, if you press tab, 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 that toggles between things that you're overlapping. So that allows me to choose the right wall that I want. And of course, I could stretch or I could use my trim tool, which is command. Uh, and that will split or trim off the edge. So then that will again help to intersect correctly. So again, I'm, I'm making small design decisions as I go. Now that I've got all of my walls in place, you see that we don't stop where doors or windows are. We draw the walls to run all the way through and then we infill later. Now the only one that I haven't done, which I might just do as well, just to, for consistency's sake, is I might even have a wall that sits over the top of the front of my kitchen cabinetry and then I'll add a wall opening to that. We turn that off. We see again this isn't intersecting very nicely, so I'll select both of those. Reference lines are all over the place. So that's not brilliant, but it'll be fine for now. And now we can start to um, put our doors and windows in. I said I'd do that in one video just to keep it simple, um, but I'll, I'll stop it now just so we've got this as a separate um, video. And then in the next video, we'll have a look at how to do the doors and windows.